This is your default standard full-sized mechanical keyboard. It's got more than 100 keys, got an Afro, arrow keys, extra commands. It is basically the standard keyboard layout when it comes to keyboards. The thing is though, these full-size keyboards are getting extremely unpopular, especially amongst the gamers in favor for tinier layouts and smaller options like this Corsair K65 RGB Mini. So the question is, is smaller better? If you pay attention to keyboards, you won't be surprised that they are getting smaller and smaller on average these days. At first, keyboard makers cut off the number pad to make what is known as the 10 keyless layout. Soon after, the poker keyboard layout became popular, especially in the custom, more enthusiast mechanical keyboard scene because they completely ditched the arrow keys, page up, page down area, and also even the Afro, basically giving a very small, clean, compact, and minimalist keyboard layout. The poker layout essentially gives you a stripped down board with all you need to type words and sentences and nothing else. With most of the functionality that was lost hidden behind a function key layer and comma. Even crazier than that, keyboards got even smaller, with 40% or smaller ortholinears appearing on the market. But of course, that never really hit the mainstream because it is too crazy for most. And since most people still need the arrow keys and some other functionality, the market kind of pulled back and reeled back a little bit in kind of a regret at making things too small and simplified. And the 65% as well as the 75% layout became extremely popular by being a lot more compact than even 10 keyless keyboards, but retaining a lot of functionality by having keys squished together to improve the amount of buttons that you still have control and access to. Keyboards like the GMMK Pro, the LK67, they are extremely popular these days and they are those layouts that I've just mentioned. So is there an advantage to swapping over to a smaller keyboard? Well, I tested a K65 RGB Mini and while it's a Mac keyboard, a mechanical one, and I have a dedicated page for that called ZX Mac, which you should go and check out for sure, that page is more for people who just want to get into the really nitty gritty enthusiast stuff. Today, we're just talking about general practicality when it comes down to keyboard size and keyboard layouts. Let's start off with the good stuff. A smaller keyboard's biggest advantage is space. By taking up less space, by ditching keys already used and hiding them with macros and function commands and things like that, you get more space to play left over on your desk. If you live in a tiny, cramped place, a city like Singapore or Hong Kong or New York, where land is not cheap, this is a big advantage considering space is a precious resource for a lot of people. Just having more space means more area to move your mouse, to put your drinks, to put little knickknacks like this beautiful liner's face, and to put other accessories that might be more important than just having a number pad on your keyboard that you might never ever use. For example, if you need to put like a stream deck on your desk. Also, where this extra space is coming from is also very important. It's to the right of the keyboard or left of your mousing area. This space means that you can have your default central mouse position where you rest your mouse as like centralized resting neutral position closer to the center of your body, which means less pronated and outstretched shoulders and arms. This is very good for ergonomics and very good at keeping your posture, your arms and then your joints feel a lot better even when you have long gaming sessions. Will having a more centralized mouse position that is more comfortable and more ergonomic for your health going to make you play better? Probably not. I mean, look at Saya Player when he went to VCT land. He literally had a box underneath his mouse because he's so used to gaming on this weird posture. But it will definitely keep you comfier for longer and also keep you less likely to be injured. On top of the ergonomic benefits, making your keyboard Tinier mix for a better keyboard look and a better looking setup. It means that things look a lot sleeker when you have less bulky of a keyboard. And when you lose the number pad and arrow keys, you end up with a lot more of a symmetrical looking keyboard, which is really nice. And let's be honest, who doesn't want a nice looking setup? And finally, a smaller keyboard has one massive improvement over full size, bigger keyboards, at least right now as the world is beginning to open up and we declare COVID is over. And that is portability, which is returning to the top as one of the most essential features or considerations as the travel returns. So that way, if you did develop a keyboard reliance, sorry, addiction over the pandemic, a smaller keyboard means that you can bring your emotional support mechanical key along for the ride, no matter where you're going, be it for a business trip or to holiday. Oh yeah, and subscribe to my keyboard channel because when I go to France, 
I will be building a keyboard everywhere I go. But it isn't all perfect. Many people definitely need a lot of extra keys that we lose when we move to a smaller board. Should you move to a smaller board or should you not? Well, for one, you need to be aware of what keys you actually use often. Do you really use the F keys all the time? Or is it a sometimes thing and having the F keys hidden behind a macro or a kind of a shortcut isn't a big deal? Also, must you have your keys in the same exact spot as in a default standard full-size keyboard? If you want a smaller keyboard and you do need those command keys all the time, there are plenty of solutions out there. For example, you can get a layout that squishes things together and keeps some extra keys to save some space. Also, getting a keyboard that allows for extensive reprogramming through VIA or other types of software, in the case of the Corsair K65 RGB Mini Corsair IQ software. Though, if you do go the reprogramming and customizability route, you must be prepared to get used to whatever macro and layout that you do program. And to some people, that is intolerable because they cannot afford losing that little bit of efficiency from the initial getting used to their keyboard part. In my opinion, it's totally worth it. But truth be told, not everyone needs or wants a smaller mechanical or non-mechanical keyboard. They're okay with a nice big chunky one. In fact, some even like the look of it. For me, I absolutely love smaller keyboards. And I will continue to stick to my array of compact, tiny form factor mechanical boards that I've collected and built over the last couple of months. So then, do you want a smaller keyboard like the K65 RGB Mini? If you want mechanical and you have trouble deciding which which mechanical keyboard to get, ZX Mac is the channel where I talk about all the mechanical keyboards that I try, review, and check out. So if you just want keyboard videos, you can go and subscribe to that channel as well. But don't worry, stay tuned to ZX Tech because I'll continue to talk about many other different types of tech and peripherals and consumer electronics. It's just that if you only want keyboard videos, ZX Mac is the place to go. There's a lot of fun stuff coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned and stuff. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and all love to you guys. Hit record. In some cases, no. Big keyboards is compensation or something lacking in someone. Then.